In this video, I'm going to show you how to break 90 without complicated changes in your swing mechanics. We're going to show you some certain shots around the golf course that if you learn them, you're guaranteed to break 90. Now, I've got also a little bit of surprise for you. Now, I've got a surprise for my dad at the end of this video, which is going to be super, super cool, but it's also a surprise for you too. So stay tuned to the end, you're going to love it. We've got to get emotional, otherwise I'll get emotional, right? Let's get started with tip number one. Oh. Oh, it's... oh! Oh no! Oh, Dad! That was a very nervy swing. Bit of ner it was a bit nervy. Yeah. A bit very nervy. Right. So when you when you feel a bit nervous on the first tee, this is one thing I found helps me quite a bit. Okay. So when you get nervous, big deep breath, hold four seconds, let it out four seconds, and then don't take too long over the ball. Not bad for the first one of the day. So don't take long, too long over the golf ball. Big deep breath, hold for four seconds. Breathe out four seconds. That'll calm you down on that first tee. Okay. So Dad, take what are you taking rescue, yeah? Little rescue, yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, it's all right. So Dad's just knocked it into the bunker, but did you see that lie? Now I want you to leave a comment in the comments box below. Should he have taken rescue wood from there? Or should he have taken something like this? Get yourself eight iron or a nine iron. Dad's in a shocking position. The first thing you've got to do, it's going to save you a stack of shots in a round of golf. Don't follow one bad shot with a bad decision. You know, you've just taken five, high, five hybrid from a shocking place. You can't get to the green. Your best option here, straight back out into the fairway. Because if you look at it here, we're in the bunker now, you're bringing in yeah. double or triple. These, these kind of uh, mistakes are going to cost you two or three shots and they're going to stop you from breaking 90. There you go. So even that one there, Dad struck it average, but you know what? He's back in play and now he's got a chance of getting on the green with his third shot and eliminating a potential double or triple bogey. So as he walked to the green, you can see that we've taken that shot from my dad there and he's kind of third shot just now ended up on the middle of the green and he's got a chance maybe of making four. So think about that when you're playing, never follow a bad decision, sorry, a bad shot with a bad decision. And you're gonna give yourself an opportunity to save yourself potentially one, two, or maybe even three shots in a single hole. Not quite that. I can't believe that. Hey. They were hitting it so well at range as well. That, I got yeah. Hey, if you look at this already. Hmm? So we're, we're, we're only on the second hole and Dad's uh, Dad's saying, oh, is hitting it so well at the driving? What's going on? <laughs> He's only actually hit three shots, you know. <laughs> <laughs> How often do you find that sometimes? You know, you're only, you're, only, you're only into your second hole and you're already thinking, oh my God, it's going to be one of those days. <laughs> you know, try not to get oh, into no. that habit, Dad. It doesn't matter. Just keep going. First couple of holes, just keep, you know, you know, you're getting focused, you know, get into the game. Yeah. Stay positive. Great drive, Dad. You still enjoying that the Callaway paradigm? Oh, oh, yes. Yeah? Yes. I like it. I like it. Birdie, come on. Good effort. Dad just makes a nice solid par there. So you can see, you know, it's easy sometimes when you start off really badly to assume it's going to stay bad throughout the next few holes, but it won't. Stay in the game. Don't worry too much about it. Don't start making stories in your head that it's going to be really terrible. Oh God, I hit it really good on the range, but now it's going to get worse. That will 100% make it worse, okay? Stay in the game. Just take it one shot at a time. Be patient. And you'll start to what dad does, start to put some powers together and hopefully break 90. Lovely strike. I'll do. I missed that one. Oh, uh -huh. dad. Did you see what happened there? I'll put the replay now. Watch dad as he stood over this putt and watch what he does when he strikes it. You see his head move towards the hole. So many of you do this when you're missing short putts for par or bogey, okay? Do me a favor, get into a routine where you take one look at the hole, go back to the ball and strike. Listen, don't look. Look at that, you hear that noise? Mm -hmm. He's just done it there, right? If you start having little peeps towards that hole, your shoulders are gonna move and you're gonna miss the putt, okay? That'll 
that's a little nugget that's going to save you a lot of shots. So as we're going around, your dad's a senior golfer and he's not reaching um, all the holes, of the, all the par fours in two, and he's often leaving himself this kind of 30 to 40 yard shot. Now, this is really normal for the club member. My question to you is, is, one, are you good at it? And two, do you practice it? Now, Dad's really good at this shot. This is one of the reasons why his handicap's coming down, okay? So what I want you to do is, is figure out if you're finding yourself with this type of shot on a regular basis, you learn this shot, the 30 or 40 yard shot, which you can probably have a lot, it's gonna save you a lot of shots again around the golf course and help you break that all important 90. So I think this is something that very few people tell you about. When you're out on the course, understanding that, you know, on a driving range, you've got perfect flat lies, but you don't have that on a golf course. We have all these different sloping lies and you must adjust to it. If you don't adjust your setup to these lies, it's impossible to hit good shots, which is one of the reasons why you might be inconsistent, right? So here's what I want you to do. Keep it really simple. This is a downhill lie. So what I'm gonna do with a downhill lie is, is simply get my spine, look, perpendicular to the slope. Can you see this? Here's the slope and move my spine perpendicular to the slope. I'm gonna move my ball position from a standard ball position, which is just ahead of center, to now more center, okay? I'm gonna literally imagine now I'm swinging up the slope and then down the slope. When the ball's kind of like this, what's that doing to the loft? It's de-lofting it. So whatever club you normally take from this distance, add another club. So I've gone from, from a six iron to a seven iron, okay? So I'm simply doing that. A lot of weight favors this foot. So get yourself set, get your body perpendicular to the slope, swing up the slope, and then down the slope. The reverse happens if I turn around here and I now go up the slope. Look at the difference here. From this position, I'm gonna, this was the downhill lie. I'm now gonna move my spine, look, more perpendicular this way. So now my weight starts to favor my lower foot, as opposed to the ball being a little bit further back in my stance, I'm gonna now move the ball ahead of center. So now I'm gonna swing down the slope and then I'm gonna swing up the slope, okay? Very, very different two shots, but one, you've got to make these adjustments. If you don't make the adjustments, you're going to ruin your strike. What else do we see from here? If you were swinging this way, okay, so now we turn around here, the ball is above our feet. What changes do you need to make there? Well, you're closer to the golf ball. So the first thing I do is simply go down the grip a couple of inches. The other thing you've got to remember, your swing is going to be a lot more rounded when you swing from here. The ball's going to want to curve quite a lot from right to left. So all I want you to do, ball above your feet, go down the grip an inch from this position, start the ball a little bit more to the right of target and let that ball swing right to left. If I turn around this side and I'm now playing the ball below my stance, this is the hardest of all lies. From this position here, what I do is I'm a long way away from the golf ball. This is the one that most people struggle with. I widen my stance to get closer because if I'm up here, I'm too tall. So I widen my stance to get closer. I go right to the top of the grip this time. And what I'll do with all of these lies, I'll make some swings. And often what happens is they make a swing practice, swing like this, and they're missing the ground. What I want you to do is just keep swinging until your club starts brushing that ground, okay? Backwards and forwards. So wider stance, go to the top of the grip, that's going to give you a much better opportunity to strike the ball when it's down here. No. Oh, 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 has it? Oh, yes. So we've headed towards the road hole bunker. Now, Dad, if you look at some of the footage that we've had today, Dad's been struggling a little bit in bunkers. So if you understand how to play bunker shots simply, you'll be able to save yourself a stack of shots. Let's go in now, help dad get out of bunkers every single time by changing just one simple thing. So dad's just hit it into the most famous bunker in the world of golf, the road hole bunker. Now he's been struggling today and getting out of bunkers and this is what's gonna stop him breaking 90. You need to be able to get out of bunkers every single time and all you've got to do is change one thing, okay? You need to focus on hitting the sand, not the golf ball. And the way to do this is when you get yourself set up here, your ball position forward, all I'm gonna get Dad to do in a second, is focus, look, on getting sand pushed out of the bunker. What Dad's been doing a lot of time through today is focusing on striking it, being very, very still. All I want you to do is look at this. Take sand, hit sand forward out of the bunker. Short bunker shots, hit sand a short distance. Long bunker shots, Hit a long distance, okay? So dad, jump in. All I want you to do, keep it simple. Get yourself set. Focus not on the ball in any shape or form, yeah? Bob's in front, that's it. And just hit sand with the club head 
towards that flag. Have a practice first so you can get a feel for this. I know you're not allowed to do it normally, so hit sand towards the, towards the hole, hit, hit the sand. That's it, a bit more. Hit that, that's it, a bit more positive, a bit more. There you go, okay, hit sand out, out of the bunker. Ball further forward in your stance for me. Further forward. Further forward in your stance, that's it. Now, focus on the sand, hit the sand out of that bunker. There we go, look at this, look at this, look at this. No way. <laughs> how, how close is that? Two or three, two, three feet? You see, this works every single time and it will save you loads of shots. Dad has been struggling all day. Oh. It's costing him a load of shots. Get the sand out of the bunker. Just one thing on this. I'm not saying hit the sand and focus on the sand. I'm saying get that sand and push it out towards that hole. Short bunkers, just imagine a short, get the sand a short distance. Long bunkers, longer way. It keeps the uh, game going. It will lose so many shots off your game and I promise you, this is a big one for Breaking 90. There you go, look at that. That's how you save some shots. Get out of sand every single time, give yourself a chance to get in a one putt. You're gonna save yourself a lot of shots in a round of golf. So before I get into the final tip, I did promise you I'd give you something super, super special, and that's coming, I promise you. But I've got a really great surprise for my dad too. So what we'll do is, is let's get into this final tip. And then, once you've done that, you're gonna be super excited. We've got something super special for you. Your ability to stop three putting is gonna save you so many shots. I've spent today having humongous putts that I've been able to get down in sometimes one, sometimes two shots. That's gonna save me a lot of shots in a round of golf. Here I've got another 30 odd foot putt, maybe more, up and down slopes. How do you get that ball next to the hole? Come and have a quick look at this. So the first thing I did to get my distance control, I spent a good five, 10 minutes on the practice putting green, basically hitting putts from one end of the green to the other. And I didn't leave that putting green until I got to the perfect distance because I want you to develop intuition with your putting. Too many people, they go on a golf course with no warming up. They get on the green and they tell themselves to hit it harder or they tell themselves to hit it softer. None of that really, really works. What you've got to do is you have to have already built in that kind of intuition. So come around here, have a look at this. So here, I've paced out the yardage, okay? I'm not telling myself to hit it harder or softer. What I'm doing is I'm getting a rhythm in my stroke. Okay, can you see this rhythm? Yeah, there's no hit, there's no decelerations. The first thing I want you to do is get that rhythm in your putting stroke. The second thing I want you to do here on particular long putts, lag putts, like is to stay very, very still. So I, don't let my head move towards a target because that affects your strike. So it's all about rhythm of stroke and just strike. Let's have a look at this in action. There we go. This is control. It's going to save you a lot of shots during a round of golf. So I promised you something special, but what I didn't tell you is this man has got something special and he isn't aware of it. So dad, I've been out with you today. Okay, you've played some really good golf. But one of the things I've noticed is in your bag is a load of rubbish, okay? <laughs> so what I've done with my partners Callaway and the St. Andrews Links Trust, what we've done is we've organized with the custom fitting facility, which is just off the 16th here, okay, at, at St. Andrews a full setted set of clubs. Yeah, we're gonna get a complete custom fit for you, all right? And um, so, uh, in the home of golf. All right, don't get emotional, don't get emotional. I have eyes, I get emotional, all right? And, sorry, let me calm myself a little bit. So, I don't want Dad to have all the fun, so I'm gonna give you the opportunity to get a custom fitted set of golf clubs. Now, if you can't make it to the home of golf and the Cali Performance Centre here, find, we're gonna help you find a custom fitting facility where you are in the world, okay? get yourself custom fitted, and then supply you with that full set of golf clubs, courtesy of my, my partner's team, Callaway. So to do that, if you want to get involved, all you've got to do is jump down in the description box below, enter your details using that link, okay? And we will get in touch with you to give you a chance of winning this amazing, amazing competition. 
getting cast and fitted, okay, not everyone needs a brand new set of golf clubs, and it's not always about that, but it's understanding what type of club is gonna be beneficial for your game. My dad had a bag of clubs, which a lot of them were just not really useful for him right now, okay? As he's got a bit older, he needs to change, he needs to add some clubs and take some clubs away. That's what I mean about custom fitting, okay? So, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, maybe share it with one of your friends, and of course, look, if you're new to the channel, press that subscribe button and the bell, so you don't miss a video just like this one. Good luck, I'll see you next time.